Angelo Garcia, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? I am good. So you just moved to my town where I live, Las Vegas. And where did you came from? Um, now you're stuck with me. <laughs> That's great. Well, it's, it's, a fun, it's a fun doubt. So you were actually in New York before you coming here, right? Yeah, New York City. I mean, it's a little bit different energy because you're going from like cold, like mostly cold city weather to a city that's in the desert with a lot of slot machines and a lot of gambling. And it's really colorful and noisy and ostentatious and chaotic, which New York has as well. But it's a different type of energy. It hits different. Right. Yeah. (laughs) New York, it kind of hits you over the head. Just hit your wallet. (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) So um, you have a big story. And I mean, a lot of people would know you from being the youngest member of Menudo when you were in the version that you were in, which is, I think, 1980, 1990, right? Yeah. I left in 91. I recorded three albums with them. And I mean, it's had its ups and downs, just like everything else. I mean, I was young. Um, when I auditioned, um, I was always a really self-confident little kid, almost to the point that I was a little bit cocky. Um, so I auditioned for the lady. I sung the song. I don't know if you remember Could Have Been So Beautiful from Tiffany. Yeah, yeah. So I sung that song. And I remember like when I um, auditioned, the lady's eyes lit up. And I was like, wow, I was like, I think I nailed this. And so then I leave and the lady's like, oh, we need to schedule another audition with the owner of the group. So then about two days later, I went to this like studio and basically where the soundboard is in the studio, it was him and the business partner that he has sitting in the room. And then I sung Who's That Girl from Madonna. Okay, awesome. And then in the part where she hits the high note, I could tell like they were digging it. And what they needed was a boy that knew English because their next album was going to be in English. And although I'm a, I'm Puerto Rican of European descent, like my mom is, um, we did our genealogy. So we're Spanish, Portuguese, and Irish. Uh, okay. Um, so my first language is English. I was born in New York city and we were in Puerto Rico on vacation when I auditioned for Menudo. So I didn't know a lot of Spanish. So it was a perfect fit because it was an English album. The songs that I was going to record in the album, they needed a boy with a really high pitch, like that could reach really high notes. And I like checked all the boxes. So when I was done with the audition, I was walking out with my mom and then she's like, so how do you think that you did? And I was like, I got this. <laughs> that's awesome. Needless yeah, because they, they offered us a contract that same day. Yeah, because so that, that is a funny because st- that is a funny story because you guys were actually on vacation and you you saw like a commercial that they were auditioning for singers, right? Exactly. Oh, you did do your homework on me. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. I'm like I'm a detective. <laughs> My mom saw a commercial, and in the commercial, one of the members that was in when I got in, his name's Sergio Blas, an amazing musician, um, was in the video, and he had done a cartwheel, and then they were like, Manito auditions, if you want to bring your son, this is the phone number, schedule your appointment, it's a huge opportunity, blah, 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 you know, they were trying to sell it on the commercial, so yeah. then my mom's like, my mom was like, um, you like to sing and you love to dance and you're always annoying us because I was that kid that anytime anyone would visit, I forced my dad to put taps under my shoes because I loved Sammy Davis Jr. And like awesome. those old black and white movies. And anytime anybody would come visit my parents, I would put on my tap shoes and I would force them to watch me tap dance and sing for them. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I was just that kid, you know what I mean? <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, and, and so when you were in Menudo, um, Ricky Martin was there. You were in that, and you were the, you were the youngest guy, right? So you're 11 years old. That must have been crazy. I mean, to step into a major point at that age. I know there's and there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff with Menudo, which we'll get into some of that. But but tell me what that was like, just starting off at so young. When we signed the contract, to be honest with you, I did not know what I was getting myself into. I was way Uh naive. I didn't realize how famous they really were because um, 
I wasn't really a Menudo fan when I got in the band. My sister kind of liked them like when she was seven, but by the time I got in the group, she was seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, I was 11, 12, 13, 14. She was about 15. So she was already over like the boy band phase. She was right. more like into like the rockers and like what was in style back then. Um, so she was already in a different phase of like her teeny bop stage was over. So I remember the first time that we went on tour it was a, a tour, a nationwide tour in Mexico. We toured the whole entire country. And I just remember getting off the plane and going to baggage claim and getting our bags. And then once we got to baggage claim, there was these like glass doors, but they were like clouded glass. You couldn't see past it. And then all of a sudden, when we walked through, the doors open and there's a sea. I'm talking about a multitude of girls. There must have been like a thousand girls outside waiting for us, screaming, trying to pull us, trying to pull our hair, trying to pull anything that they could touch of us. Yeah, getting, the, getting the, beat, the Beatles treatment. <laughs> we're like the beat, we're the Latin Beatles. You know what I right. mean? Like we're, we're that famous in Latin America. And we, they had Menudo Mania in the U.S., um, so when that happened, I like kind of, it like threw me off, you know what I mean? I wasn't used to that or like people trying to like pull me and like, you know what I mean? So right. it took me a, probably about six months to get used to that aspect of it. And then you begin to realize that, um, wow, my childhood has definitely ended because it's adult responsibilities imposed right. on an 11 year old child. So long gone were the days of being able to go to the mall with my friends and being able to go to the movies or any public place for that matter, because we would literally get hounded by people. So everything mm. turned into security and you know how it is protecting yourself from the paparazzi and literally a life uh, you have to be a recluse you can't be outside with the public because you literally when you become a public figure you belong to the public yeah and they and, and that's how they treat you right my wife is familiar with menudo and mexicans are very are very passionate oh uh, yeah um, <laughs> oh my god mexican people are so passionate and they're amazing it's a really beautiful culture it's very colorful um i was reading this i studied psychology in college and what they say is mexico is a country that is very um they worry about the betterment of the um in the u.s we're very hyper individualistic right there there so whereas the in mexico right. they're more about like the collective well-being so right. it's that's why like the families it's like once you get married sometimes you even live with your mom and like your grandmother like they like the family unites and they all help each other to where it's in the u.s once you turn 18 the parents are like all right when are you gonna move out <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> exactly go find it at least that's how it was in my case my mom right. was like, when are you gonna move out you're 18 it's like here's yeah. your bags goodbye <laughs> i'm turning your bedroom into an office and like a little gym <laughs> So some some of um, some of the Menudo, Menudo thing, and we talked a little bit about this before we came on air. Um, yeah. So it was a good it was a good and bad thing. It was like I, I, like you said, your childhood kind of ended, and it ended in, in a number of ways that weren't so nice. Um, but you you kind of you do want to talk about that in the sense of educating people because you kind of stepped Absolutely. into a whole, a whole situation that you just weren't aware of, right? I feel like Menudo for me was like a high school into show business. I learned how to like capture the masses. I mean, I've sung in front of a hundred thousand people. So it really helped me develop my artistic prowess. However, on the flip side of the coin, when you're dealing with beautiful children that are talented and that are unique, the dark side of that, because life, the way I look at it is a yin and a yang. The right. dark yeah. side of being a beautiful little boy that is talented is that it attracts not only 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 year old girl fans and boys, it also attracts predators. And as right. a result of that, I was sexually molested for 
probably almost the entire time I was in the group. It wasn't by the manager or the owner of the group, the way a lot of people speculate. And to be honest with the, the managers and the owners at that time, I felt that they were very protective of me. I never suspected anything. I was never touched inappropriate by them. However, people within the circle of so the like inner them. circle yeah. of the group, right. um, there were certain people that, took advantage of me. I was introduced to alcohol way too young. And what I learned from it is that you have to be very careful how you manage your children in show business to all the parents that are trying to get their children in show business that want their children to excel. And I'm not telling you not to put your children in show business. However, keep your eye out because there's a lot of predators and there's a lot of people that will get close to you and that will offer you the sun and the moon for the simple fact that they want to get close to your child. So right. keep your eye out. Keep your eye out for people that are way too friendly and that a wolf will never um, manifest himself as something wicked and as something evil. When someone wants to get close to your child, they're going to manifest themselves into something pure and something beautiful. So those are the people that you have to be careful with. And people that are too touchy, touchy and huggy with your children, those are the type of people that you need to steer away from. And just, you know, keep your eye open and be very protective of your child. Um, if you can, like be with them 24 seven when it comes to anything that they're doing. If they need to travel, I would suggest travel with them or get somebody that right. can trust to travel with them. But even then, I mean, some of the most molested children have been by their uncles and they're, you know what I mean? So even within the like family network, you have to be careful and just keep yeah. your eyes open. Keep an eye in the back of your head. <laughs> Yeah, you know, and, and I mean, and the thing is, too, it's not just show business, it's just in general, and it, it's a sad thing, but I think it's great that you actually cleared that up, because there is a lot of misconception about, people have heard those stories a little bit about Menudo, but they don't really know the story, so it's great that you actually explain that it wasn't those guys, because they shouldn't get tainted for stuff they didn't do either, right? I mean, they were accused of doing things with other members, unfortunately. Right. I can only speak based on my experience. Of course, of so course. Yeah. I tell their story my story didn't include being molested by anyone that was in management or owners or anything however a lot of boys have come forward and have said that they that certain people within the really inner circle that they were sexually molested right. it wasn't my story i can't speak on it but if right. you want to know more i mean you can go on like youtube and you know all these channels and you can see their testimonies yeah. and there's, you a, know there's what? a lot out there on that unfortunately but it, it's out, out there, there. it's out there what? another thing um we just recorded uh um um a documentary that's coming out in the spring on okay. hbo map so be prepared because all the dirt is coming out um, yeah. in this spring on HBO Max. Like, um, I think that it's scheduled to come out. I'm not sure if it is. You know, they always tell you like a certain date, but then it changes. So just keep your eye out because a documentary will be coming out soon. I know yeah. that I was interviewed and like probably like 12 other members and we're all telling our stories, the good, the bad, the ugly and everything in between. So, yeah. you know, stay tuned for that. Uh, you know what, man, you, you have an opportunity to do a lot of good and just what you just what you explained is, is super important and hopefully helps some parents that are gung ho about entertainment for their kids. It's treacherous and, and it's good to just say, hey, do what you're going to do, but just be aware. Um, you know what? So, you know who needs to be extra careful? The little kids that do like beauty pageants. I mean, there's a lot of predators within that, like the little like toddlers and tiara type little girls. And little right. boys, that world is riddled with pedophiles. So you have to be really careful and understand that when you're exposing your children to the masses and to the public and to experiences like working at a premature age, you will be exposed to other adults and you will be exposed to predators. Predators know where to hang out. They're going to hang out in places like children beauty pageants. You're going to see them hanging out in children's school parks and the play yards. They're going to go to candy stores, toy stores. That's where they hang out. Unfortunately, that's the world we live in. Yep. So just be really careful. Yeah, man. Hey, you know what? And, and thank you for sharing that. I know it, it's not 
a great subject to talk about, but it's important to talk about. It's but important but, to talk about it because um, it's good to educate people. And the way I got over it, by told you I wanted to tell people, I think it's really important for you if you've experienced molestation or um, um, domestic violence or been abused or bullied, which are all kind of run in the same circle, it's really important not to be embarrassed to reach out and ask for help. Like when I was managing and digesting all of those ugly feelings that you get, because at one point I felt like it was my fault. I right. ended up starting to, I went to therapy late. I went probably like around 28 to 29. I started going to therapy and I decided to go back to college as well. And I studied psychology in college because I wanted to understand humanity better. And therapy and that, learning about human like nature and like um, personality disorders and mental disorders galvanized within me the um, prowess to be able to heal my spirit and to heal my soul close that chapter and move on so therapy is so important yeah we were talking about that last night you know just you want to be happy have a good life get try to push the negative away if you acknowledge it but try to not not let that rule your life right that that's yeah. i think that's the key of life in general for everybody um yeah you, so so beyond menudo you've you've actually been extremely active you've released your own other singles other albums they've done well yeah. um you've released english and spanish because Spanish, like you mentioned spanish was not your first language so that's a challenge. <laughs> well you know what after like being in the group for three years um it's kind of like you're forced to learn it like in light speed and then once I learned it um once I got out of the group I like had a lot of opportunities I was signed to Warner Brothers as a solo artist I released the album for um Mexico for the Mexican market it was um the first time that Latin um it was Spanish hip hop. It was when hip hop yeah. was like real huge. And I was checking it, that stuff um, out last was, night. It sounds it sounds great. Like it's it's really <laughs> fun music. Yeah. So I did that one, and then I went to Europe. I lived in Europe for a few years, and I got signed to East Records, East West Records, which is a branch of Warner Brothers. And I recorded music out there, and then I released a ton of independent music. Um, one of my favorite tracks is a track called "Delusions of Grandeur." Um, so you can find that on all of the like download stations, but I didn't put my last name on this one. So you would have to search Angelo delusions of grandeur. But then I realized Angelo is like, if you just enter Angelo, a ton of different Angelos come right. up. So I was like, <laughs> I'm going to have to add my last name. Yeah, so you probably that will. Point on, um, the only two singles that I released as Angelo, once I realized it's like not smart to do that was Delusions of Grandeur. So if you want to search for these two tracks, you need to search Angelo, Delusions of Grandeur, or Angelo, You Are the Only One. Those two were released as Angelo. Then after that, I came to my senses. And then from that point on, I released everything from Angelo Garcia. So once you enter Angelo Garcia, you can see all of my, like, all the stuff that I've done as a solo artist. Yeah, there's a lot of, I should say, too, there's a lot of fun video stuff on your on your YouTube. Tell people how to find your YouTube channel. I guess is it just Angelo Garcia or? Yeah, I just enter Angelo Garcia. My YouTube channel is Garcia Angelo. Might as well give all my social media while I'm at it. Um, you can do my TikTok. I'm like coming back to social media. I took a five month hiatus to work on myself, and I'm, I will be back in social media probably starting next month. And my TikTok is Angelo Garcia official page, as well as my Instagram, Angelo Garcia official page. Page. My page on Facebook, if you enter Angelo Garcia, it's the first one that pops up. Join my public page. Um, my YouTube is Garcia Angelo. And my Twitter is Angelo Pop Music. So just follow me so you can follow my adventures and my craziness. Yeah. And the, the boss sent I like to push the you have, some, you have some great, You have some great, great videos on this one. It's so funny we, that you say that because I um, ended up one time um i ended up becoming like a viral like star because one day yeah. i was bored and i was like i want to sing today i was in the mood to sing i had never shared any like singing videos live on my fan page and i only had like five thousand followers so i'm like why is it that after being in such a famous boy band i only have can i curse fucking three five thousand followers i'm like come on we were like the beatles why why me um, one day um i posted a song um pearl jam jeremy 
Oh, okay. and, um, cool. and so I put on my page and people started like complimenting me and everything. But there was this one comment that stood out and it was a hater. She was such a Karen. She's like, oh, my God, Angelo. She's like, you sound terrible. She's like, take that cover off of your page. She's like, you're going to end up losing fans. And I was like, well, thank God that I don't like saying to like, please anyone. I did it because I wanted to and I would never post anything I'm not proud of. So right. uh, thank you for your comment. However, um, I don't have to listen to what you say. I like it and I'm fine yeah. if nobody likes it. If I end up losing fans, oh, well, the next day I had 20,000 fans. The, uh, uh, the, um, the song went viral. Yeah. So and I was like, oh my God, I was like 20,000 fans in overnight. So I was like, I guess what my fans wanted was for me to share my talent again. So I started right. like putting, I started posting covers online, everything, because I'm a musical, like I call myself musically schizophrenic. I like it all. I feel like <laughs> I it's good music I'm, I'm and bad word. music. <laughs> I like it all, like even country. I just like, there's good songs in every genre. There really is. Right. Yep. So I was posting everything from Matt King Cole, Pearl Jam, Stone Temple Pilots, The Spice Girl, Selena Gomez, Taylor Swift, like you yep. name it, I covered it. <laughs> and my fan <laughs> page started going viral and it started going up and up and up. I ended up with 500,000 followers. And then I was like, why is Mexico ignoring me? I was like, I don't understand why fucking Mexico, like, what do I have to do? And then one day I got an email from a fan on my Facebook page and she's like, hey, Angelo, she's like, you need to sing the song Te Metiste by Ariel mm -hmm. Camacho. And I'm like, who the hell is that? I've never heard of that dude. I was like, yeah. well, curious. I went on YouTube, clicked on it. And when I heard it, it was Banda. Banda is Mexican mm -hmm. country music. It's really fun that music, was like, yeah. I've never done this genre, but I feel it's important <laughs> to push your like comfort zones. And I was like, I've never done this genre. I don't know if it's going to be a disaster or not, but fuck it. Let's do the cover. Let's see if the instrumental is available. It means that the universe wants me to do a cover of it. I found right. the instrumental. I did the cover, posted it. Within two hours, it had like over a million views. That went viral. Wow, My page crazy. ended up going from 500,000. I started doing a bunch of those Latin country music covers. It went from 500,000 all the way to a million followers. And I wow. ended up getting like a deal to record that music. So I recorded three songs in that genre, which I never thought in my wildest dreams I would ever do. Yeah. And the rest that's, is that's history. Such, <laughs> such, such, that sets people that don't know the band or that. I mean, there's a whole bunch of Mexican music that people don't really know. Like, that's oh, yeah. so fun. That music is so fun. Like, <laughs> oh, awesome. yeah. Yeah. I also was invited to Tosh.0. You know Tosh.0. Yeah, he no right. longer has that show. So I'm like very like, kind of like I follow like my intuition and I'm a very spur of the moment kind of guy and it's like if I'm in the mood to do something I'll do it and it's very organic for me so on Halloween I literally dressed up as He-Man and you know the introduction <laughs> of He-Man he -Man is like the gayest superhero ever so I was like I have to do him so you know the introduction where he's like hi I am Adam Prince of, you know, um, defender of Castle Grace, Grace Skull, or whatever he says. I right. literally got the best he man, did the whole introduction with the sword and everything. It went viral, it had over 10 million <laughs> views. How and fun. as a result of that, I got invited to Tosh.0. They didn't know who I was. And so funny. when my manager told them, well, you know that this guy was in Manito and they told him my history they're like oh my god we can't believe it we just liked them because of that video I was only supposed to get a little guest spot on the video on the show they ended up doing the whole show around me oh that's awesome man so if you yeah, you know, see it, it, yeah the thing is it's funny because I, I mentioned my wife that we were talking and she's like I'm, yeah. like I'm like do you know what do you know Angelo Garcia and she's like from Manito I'm like yeah <laughs> she knew we were instantly uh, that's cool. so cool. Yeah. What's so what? Um, we're going to wrap up in a second, but um, what's your advice to young artists, people that are not, you know, creatives in general? Like, what what would you say, like, in terms of their passion and, and what they want to do with, with that? I feel that it's really important for you to follow your gut. I feel like your gut and your intuition is the compass which guides your conscience 
towards the direction that you're meant to be. Never lose sight of that feeling that you have because it will always lead you in the right direction. That's what I've learned, at least for me. And that's the best advice that I could give the youth. And to always stay true to who you are, be authentic, be genuine. And most of all, practice kindness because what your actions do is that they become your habits and then your habits basically what happens is it becomes the legacy that you leave on the planet when you cease to exist and make it a good one make when people were around you that they felt good and they felt uplifted when they were around you and that's the most important thing and having the attitude is going to open so many doors so mm-hmm. it's like that's the, the icing on the cake you know what i mean just be kind <laughs> yeah. those, you know what those are the good words and be, be be who you are be truthful people people can sense that they they can sense when it's authentic and when it's not authentic right authenticity is the key yeah thank you so much for joining us i know you're a super busy guy and, and hopefully we'll get a chance to meet up uh for lunch or something in vegas now that you're here <laughs> absolutely i'm ready for it tell your wife yeah. i said hi and to everyone thank you for joining us i send you all my love and all my light and we'll see you again real soon Bye. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much, Angela. I appreciate it.